the indulgence waiting for me 30 minutes can i go on record your show yes before we go on record you you conveyed a message to your colleagues I, I, I was not able to do that, Your Worship, but um, Mr. Van Seil contacted um, council and he also came to court, in court, and announced uh, the arrangement, but it was only done when they, they confirmed that it will be correct. Otherwise, um, one of my colleagues would have stood in. In that case, let's go on record. Thank you, Your Please call the accused persons. Can I go on record? A court order that the images of accused number one and two cannot be taken still stands. No images of court number one and two can be taken for any purpose, none whatsoever. Can we get the accused into the accused dog, please? Right, the members of the media, we now want to proceed. All the pictures must stop now. Ms. Matabata, please indicate when we are on record. Thank you, Yushab. We are on record. Appearances on this day, the 4th of November 2020, court number 6, case number A 16679 of 2020, State versus Village of Mandolu and five others. Appearances as before, except for our accused number um, four to six, Mr. the instructing attorney, Mr. Matopa, will appear today as arranged. Indeed, the matter is on the roll today for the court to give judgment. And judgment is as follows. Firstly, I will start with the background of this matter. This is an application for bail brought by accused number two, number four, five, and six. Accused number one has not yet brought an application for bail. His legal representative has indicated that he has not yet received any instructions to proceed with the application Accused number three is a company called Rising Estates Pty Ltd as represented by accused number one. Accused number one and two appeared for the first time in court on the 17th of October 2020. The state indicated that their investigation in terms of section 50 subsection 60 of Act 51 of 1977 insofar as accused number one and two are concerned is finalized Therefore, a date of the 30th of October 2020 for a formal bail application was arranged with their then legal representative, Advocate Gronier Grill, who stood in for Mr. DeMeyer. Accused number four, number five, and six were subsequently arrested on the 20th of October 2020 and made their first appearance in court 
on the 21st of October 2020. I kiss number four, five, and six first appearance. On their first appearance, the state brought an application for a remand in accordance with the provisions of section 50, subsection 60 of Act 51 of 1977. In support of this of its application, the state presented Exhibit A, which is an affidavit attested to by GN Marie Marais, who is part of the investigating team. The application for a section 50 subsection 60 of Act 51 of 1977 was vehemently opposed by the defense. In return, the defense submitted that they are ready to proceed with an application for bail. In opposing the state's application for a remand in terms of section 50 subsection 60 of Act 51 of 1977, Exhibit B, which is a court judgment handed down on the 21st of October 2020, in the Gauteng Division in Pretoria, Exhibit C, which is accused number four's affidavit, Exhibit D, which is accused number five's affidavit, as well as Exhibit C, Exhibit uh, E, which is accused number six's affidavit, all of which were submitted to uh, pursue the court, not to grant the state a remand, and for a formal bill application to proceed. Due to the expired court hours, the matter was remanded until the 23rd of October 2020 for the parties to finalize their arguments in respect of the state's application for a remand. On the 23rd of October 2020, accused number four, five, and six were brought before court. The parties finalized their submissions. The court made a finding that there is no reason why the formal bail application should not commence and that the state had time to finalize the investigation in terms of section 50 subsection 60 of act 51 of 97, 1977 prior to the arrest of the accused this was confirmed when accused number one and two appeared before court furthermore the state indicated that the charges fall within the ambit of schedule 5 of act 51 of 1977 as amended which effectively implied that the defense bears honors and has to start it also became clear that the court hours were going to expire shortly. This effectively granted the state an advantage of the weekend within which to finalize whatever investigation that they still required. The state's application for a remand in terms of section 50 subsection 6D of Act 51 of 1977 was therefore dismissed. The defense then proceeded with their application for bail in respect of accused number two number four number five and six all four applicants that is accused number two four five and six proceeded by way of affidavits as well as documentary evidence they thereafter closed their cases no oral evidence was led the state also responded by way of an affidavit exhibit m which is an affidavit attested to by gn marie marie who is part of the investigating team together with documentary evidence no oral evidence was led accused number two four five and six is application for bail fall within schedule five of act 51 of 1977 as amended due to the fact that they are facing charges of fraud theft and man money laundering to the tune of 106 million 64,813 rand. According accused number four and five also have a pending case wherein they have been arranged on uh, several charges including fraud, forgery, money laundering, contravention of item 25 of schedule one of the prevention of organized crime act number 121 of 1998 and contravention of regulation number six subsection one and six subsection six of the exchange control regulations they are due to appear in court for plea and trial from the 20 uh, the 31st of may 2021 to the 18th of june 2021 in terms of section 35 of act 108 of 1996 that is the constitution of the republic of south africa deals with the rights of arrested detained and accused persons. 
section 35 subsection 1 f provides that everyone who is arrested for allegedly committing an offense has the right to be released from detention if the interests of justice permit subject to reasonable conditions however the right as conferred by the provisions of section 35 subsection 1 of the constitution are not absolute they are subject to the provisions of section 36 of act 108 of 1996 which is the limitation clause of the constitution offenses which fall within the ambit of schedule 5 of act 51 of 1977 as amended are governed by the provisions of section 60 subsection 11 b of act 51 of 1977 which provides that where an accused is charged with an offense as referred to in schedule 5 the court shall order that the accused be detained in custody until he is dealt with in accordance with the law unless the accused having been given a reasonable opportunity to do so adduces evidence which satisfies the court that the interest of justice permits his release position regarding a case number two it has been argued on behalf of a case number two that she is not the so-called main accused in this case seemingly her detention is by virtue of her marriage to accused number one it has also been said that her further detention is not justified she's a south african citizen her entire life is in south africa she is a mother to two minor children, one of whom still breastfeeds. She has resigned as a director uh, from my kids number three in 2017 and has handed her passport to the state. It has been further argued that uh, further detention is not necessary and that there is a no foundation of facts for her to be detained as she bears no knowledge of the charges. The defense argued further that an allegation by the state that accused number two will evade her trial and skip the country is a mere speculation which is not supported by any facts. According to the state, bail is opposed in respect of all accused including accused number two. Amongst other reasons, the state has raised concerns that the accused are a flight risk that they will intimidate witnesses and that their addresses are, not, are questionable in that should they be released, the state will not know exactly where to find them. The defense, on the other hand, has argued that the state has not furnished the court with any solid evidence in terms of section 60, subsection 4, A to E of Act 51 of 1977 in respect of case number 2. It has also been placed on record that accused number two suffers from anemia and requires medical attention and that should bail be granted she can only afford 20,000 rents as she is not employed. In respect of accused number two, I find the following. Indeed, accused number two is married to accused number one. She's a South African citizen. She has two minor children and she has already handed to the state her passport. Accused number two has no previous convictions or any pending cases. The state's concern that she's a flight risk is only a concern that is not substantiated by any solid evidence. It is not in dispute that accused number two resigned from uh, rising estates in 2017. Rising estates is accused number three in this matter as represented by accused number one. Position relating to Akis number four and five. Akis number four and five are Malawian citizens. They presently hold the status of permanent residency in South Africa. They have a pending case as mentioned above in paragraph number 18. In the face of a concern to self-incrimination and to also be able to exercise their right to remain silent in the pending case, Accused number four approached the North Houghton Division by way of an application 
seeking an order that the respondents, namely the Minister of Home Affairs, the Acting Director of Home Affairs, and the Department of Home Affairs Senior Administration Officer, be interdicted from withdrawing his and his family's permanent residence permits and that the 30-day period within which he was afforded to make representation be put in abeyance until such time when the pending criminal trial in the Gauteng Division Pretoria is finalized alternatively until he and his wife have pleaded and the evidence has been led in the, uh, in the Department of Home Affairs related charges. Judgment in the matter referred to in paragraph 35 supra was handed down on the 21st of October 2020. The court held that the notice issued by the Department of Home Affairs dated the 2nd of August 2020 is suspended until when the applicant, that is accused number four, and his wife, that is accused number five in this case, have pleaded to the charges and once they have pleaded, they be afforded a period of 30 days from the date of plea within which to make any formal representations as envisaged in the notice dated the 2nd of August 2020. The effect of this judgment as referred to above is that accused number four and five status of permanent residence in the Republic of South Africa remains unchanged. According to the defense, accused number four and five are leaders in a church called Enlightened Christian Gathering and are prominent members of the community. It has been argued that they are not a flight risk due to one of the reasons being their large role in the community and a large number of followers. It has also been argued that it is not possible for accused number four and five to can hide as they are well known. The state has argued that accused number four and five are a flight risk and that there is a possibility that if released they will interfere or intimidate witnesses. With regards to accused number six, it has been argued that accused number six is married and has no children. The defense further argued that accused number six is not a flight risk as she has a strong family ties within the Republic of South Africa, which includes her mother, who she is financially maintaining. Accused number six has no pending cases or any previous convictions. She also has uh, she also has proved that she has two immovable properties that she jointly owns with her husband. The state, on the other hand, argued that accused number six's address is questionable and that she is a flight risk. The state also argued that all applicants in this matter, including accused number four and five, are a flight risk due to the fact that they have multiple passports, their residential addresses are unclear, and that there is an incentive for them to flee due to the seriousness of the allegations, as well as possible heavy sentences that might be imposed should they be convicted. In State v. Fermas, 1996, Volume 1, SACR 528T, Judge Van Dekhoest referred to Section 60, Subsection 4B of Act 51 of 1977 as the prime consideration whether the accused will stand his trial. He held that Section 60, Subsection 4B must be read with Section 60, Subsection 6, taking the following grounds into account. The emotional, family, community, or occupational ties of the accused to the place at which he or she is to be tried. The assets held by the accused where such assets are situated. The names and travel documents held by the accused which may enable him or her to leave the country. The extent to which the accused may afford to forfeit his pay. The question of whether he or she is uh, his extradition could readily be affected. The nature of the gravity of the charge, the strength of the case against the accused person, the nature and gravity of the punishment, 
the binding effects of bail condition as well as any other factor that the court deems fit to take into account bail is never to be viewed as a punishment or incentive it is only a means to secure the accused attendance of the criminal proceedings if bail is granted to an accused person that is never to be interpreted as an indication that the accused person is likely to be acquitted or he or she is likely to be convicted if bail is denied as well that should never be interpreted as an indication that the accused person is going to be uh, convicted or he's going to be acquitted as i've said bail is only a means of securing an attendance attendance of the accused person of the rest of the criminal proceedings at the bail proceedings it has to be borne in mind that a presumption of innocence still applies and that the court has to be satisfied on a balance of probabilities that the accused if released will attend the rest of the criminal proceedings will not interfere with the investigation or with the witnesses this was also pointed out in s versus fermas 1996 volume 1 SACR 5218 in S versus Fakir, it is a 2014 decision, JDR 1351 GP. The court held that the magistrate's concern that the accused, who is a foreigner, would not stand trial, has to be based on objective facts that there was a likelihood that she would flee, but simply on the basis that she was a foreigner. In this matter, the state has made submissions that accused number four and five has have disposed of their properties that is their vehicles however no evidence was placed before court to substantiate same a certain website was referred to the court therefore makes the following findings in respect of accused number two she is a housewife with two minor children he has no previous convictions or pending cases therefore bail is fixed in the amount of 20,000 rents subject to conditions that will be announced shortly. In respect of accused number four and five, they currently hold the status of permanent residence. Although that status is still a concern to the state and under investigation, but the fact currently remains that they are permanent residents and that status still stands at the present moment. Should accused number four and five's permanent residency status be revoked whilst this case is still pending in court, the state will then exercise its rights in respect of such a, in terms of section 68 of Act 51 of 1977. Accused number four and five are known and the likelihood of them absconding is very minimal. Bail in respect of accused number four and five, five is fixed in the amount of 200,000 rents for each of them with conditions to be announced shortly. Bail in respect of accused number six is fixed in the amount of 100,000 rents with conditions to be announced shortly. Accused number two, number four, number five and six, please rise so that you can listen to the bail conditions. Please listen properly and attentively. Accused number two is to report to her nearest SAP uh, office every Monday and Friday between six in the morning and six in the evening until when this case is finalized. Accused number four and number five are to report to their nearest SAP office every Monday and Friday between six in the morning and six in the evening until when this case is finalized. Accused number six is to report to her nearest SAPS office every Monday and Friday between six in the morning and six in the evening until when this case is finalized. The fourth condition, accused number two, four, five, and six are, to, are completely barred from traveling outside of the borders of the Republic of South Africa until when this case is finalized. 
accused number four and five are barred from traveling anywhere else in the Republic of South Africa. They can only travel within the Gauteng and Northwest provinces uh, borders until when this case is finalized. <coughs> the travel documents of accused number two, four, five, and six that have been handed to the investigating <coughs> officer are to remain in the investigating officer's possession until this case is finalized. The accused are also barred from applying for any travel documents whilst this case is still pending in court. Accused number four and five are to hand over an original title deed of a property that is jointly owned by them. The details of the property as mentioned in exhibit C and D are 1585 Midstream Estate House situated at Midstream Estate Centurion with a purchase price of 5.5 million rands as a guarantee that they will attend the rest of the criminal proceedings and that should either of them abscond, this property shall be deemed forfeited to the state. The original title did shall be handed to the National Prosecuting Authorities uh, Assets for Future Unit for Safekeeping on or before the 5th of November 2020 at 6 in the afternoon at the NPA's VGM building, Silverton, Pretoria, and will be kept safely by the state until when this case is finalized. Accused number four and five are barred from disposing of the property as mentioned above or obtaining any new title deed for the said property until when this case is finalized. Accused number two, number four, and uh, number two, four, five, and six are not to intimidate or threaten state witnesses in this case directly or indirectly. Accused number four and number five, please listen attentively. In your preachings or any platform to your congregants as well as your followers, you are barred from making any threats towards the state witnesses, the members of the prosecuting team, and the members of the investigating team. Accused number two, four, five, and six, uh, two, four, five, and six must bear in mind that if any of these bail conditions as mentioned above are adhered to, if they are not adhered to, the state is at liberty to bring proceedings before court in terms of section 68 of Act 51 of 1977 that their bail be cancelled and their money be forfeited to the state. Do you all understand? What do you want to do with the matter, State? What do you want to do with the matter? Yes, the state would request a further uh, remand. Um, may I suggest um, a date? I didn't look at the date. I, it seems like that Advocate Mokotwani wants to address the court, yes? Your Worship, in fact, we are ready to proceed with bail application. It may be Your Worship is amenable to that, Your Worship. Pardon? Your Worship, we are ready to proceed with bail application. It may be Your Worship is amenable to that. And if not today, Your Worship, maybe on Friday, Your Worship. Are you available for case number one's bail application on Friday? I, I am here, sir. Mr. Matopo, will you be available on Friday? Let's go, please. On Friday. I kiss number one's formal bill application. Obviously, your clients have to be in attendance. Yes, um, I can be available on Friday. So. Pardon? I can be available on Friday. Thank you. And what about you, sir? As a copy of your worship, I can be available on Friday as well.
Your case is remanded until this coming Friday, 6 November 2020, in court number 16. It is for a case number one's formal bail application. A case number one, please rise. You'll be in custody until Friday when the court will listen to your formal bail application. A case number two, as I've said, your bail is uh, 20,000 rands. If you pay it, you are going to be released. You must be back 6 November 2020, court number 16, at half past 8 in the morning. If you pay bail and you fail to appear in court, the warrant is going to be authorized for your arrest. You'll be arrested, you'll be kept in custody, and your bail money will be forfeited to the state. You must also adhere to the bail conditions. Do you understand? I kiss number four and five. As I've said, your bail is 200,000 rands each. If you pay it, you are going to be released. You must be back 6 November 2020, court number 16, at half past eight in the morning. If you fail to appear, a warrant will be issued. You'll be arrested. You'll be kept in custody. Your bail money will be forfeited to the state. I kiss number six. Your bail is 100,000 rands. If you pay it, you'll be released. You must be back 6 November, half past eight in the morning. As I've said, if either one of you does not adhere to bail conditions, you are going to be rearrested. You'll be kept in custody. Your bail money will be forfeited to the state. Once the court has held any inquiry and it turns out in that inquiry, you are in the wrong. So please make sure that you adhere to the bail conditions. The bail conditions are in writing. In case you didn't understand any of them, your legal representatives will guide you. I will attach them to the chart sheet so that you can refresh. Uh, Mr. Matopo, this uh, original title did when is it going to be handed to the National Prosecuting Authority? I've given you until 5 November, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, but I want to have a commitment from you. When are you going to have it handed in? As the court pleases, Your Worship. Your Worship. I'm going to endeavor, but I'd ask the court's indulgence to hand it in on, on, on the 6th. Um, no. I've it, made a ruling, I've made an order that it has I'll to be handed I'll. before 5, 5. November, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If I don't have it by then, then I'm going to have to cancel your client's pay. No, Your Worship, I'll endeavor to have it handed into the prosecuting unit. All right. As the court pleases. As the court pleases, Your Worship. Can we adjourn? That is the role so far as I know. Thank you, Your Worship. Court adjourns.